Good morning, folks. Going to be a flood of eye candy and top science news today, including another ring of the climate bell and a major update on an Earth change. But we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun pretty quiet. You should see the coronal holes turning towards the limb on the south, producing enhanced streams, and here at Earth, the first of those enhanced streams is beginning to wane. We do expect a second component to arrive tonight or tomorrow, and that's the one that could produce low-level geomagnetic storms. It's also worth noting that the active region cresting into view on the north does not have any sunspots at the foot points of the fields. Flare risk is currently low. Let's go to GO-17 and the Sierra Fire Temperature Overlay, view of the California fires as they continued burning into the night. Who wants to jump out to deep space next? And we are tackling a major plasma cosmology point about observational reality of the cosmos. Lenses. They are everywhere in the sky and so many examples are known. But a major disagreement has been about gravity versus plasma lensing and therefore also magnetic field lensing. And today, we can pound the table saying yes, yes it can work that way. And given the massive plasma halos being discovered right where the dark matter lensers were supposed to be, it's almost too easy. And it's not just the extra plasma, but dust and neutral atoms too. More complex molecules seen only in certain wavelengths of light, if only our eyes were actually well suited to study the plasma universe. And part of that universe is the voids, huge areas where density is forsaken for the extreme example of cold, dark, deep, empty space. And it turns out even the nothings of the universe debunk the cold dark matter models. Folks, I can honestly say this is a new one for me. From the failed detection experiments to the harmony lacking with the large-scale anisotropy observations and the cosmological constant, matter and space haven't been too kind to the dark matter paradigm the last few years. Up next, prehistoric lion cubs, two of them. Their bodies discovered only 15 meters apart, the same exact cave den, the same exact age of only one to two months, and yet, these scientists are confused thinking that those are just coincidences. A one to two month lion cub died in the area 40 something thousand years ago, and another one to two month old lion cub died in the exact same spot 20,000 years later. No other remains found in the area. They isotope dated it, and folks, no, that is not a cosmic coincidence 20,000 years in the making. That's the isotope fiasco, and it's literally the only thing in all the evidence that points to them not being brother and sister. In reality, it points to a major exposure to cosmic radiation by one of them, and then the inundation of the cave by what ultimately preserved the bodies. And speaking of inundation that preserves things, this is by far the most calmly creative way of describing a cyclical deluge, highly variable sediment deposition. This is during the last glacial maximum, and perhaps even a bit up through the Helena Poly event, and yes, highly variable here means more than just rainy versus non-rainy seasons. That's slow dustings, followed by a cataclysmic inundation. Two on the galactic current sheet here using the solar system as a lab. The demonstration of plasma turbulence, inability to destroy numerous solar wind structures, including the current sheet, which is a more impressive survival than the galactic current sheet against turbulence from stellar nova, which it encounters throughout the galaxy. And up next in that realm. For folks who know the disagreement about the cause of the mid-spiral arm features, Many think it's the galactic current sheet, including myself, which comes with the Taurus jet model of galaxies. Some think they are galactic spiral shocks, or a ripple from when the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy hit the Milky Way long ago. And others still think they are feather plasma instabilities off the arms themselves. From a practical standpoint, and what it will do to the sun, it's all the same for us, but we do like getting the right answer ultimately. Spiral shocks, electric ripple, plasma features, it's all part of the helical spiraling structure we're most concerned with at the galactic scale, identified here. So folks, two days ago we went over the Atlantic shutdown, confirmed. The Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, including the Gulf Stream, is entering a weak state and that's cold, bad news for the world. We had brought it back into the discussion of A8 on our climate chart where we had many times seen the stories about melting polar ice triggering the ice ages and one of those things was the shutdown of the circulation today. Let's go back to a global cold snap 8,000 years ago. Only while the rest of the world was chilling to the bone, southern Greenland was melting, or had been melting, dumping cold fresh water into the Atlantic, desalinating, shutting down circulations and heat transport. 
This is a key historic example of A8. And last but not least, we're up at the top of the sky and we return to the polar summer mesospheric echoes. But to understand this one, let's go back to the past. For those who don't recall, earlier this year we learned that the geomagnetically driven polar echoes, which require ice and electric dust, are increasing. This is caused by the weakening geomagnetic field of our planet as the excursion cycle unfolds. And today, the super bore hits the mainstream journals. This is the group that tried to gain traction with this at the EGU 2020 meeting, but now it's front and center in GRL. And folks, gotta love the part of the sentence they left out of their highlight. Yeah, maybe it was missed or ignored before. But the other option is what we've said, that it wasn't there before in Earth's failing field system anchoring the catastrophe cycle is leaving those breadcrumbs across the atmosphere for us to find. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, the science revolution continues, and I hope you all realize how many authors know the score for me to be able to have this many new papers to share on the topic almost every day. They are with us, as quietly and carefully as they can be. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.